When you are exploring mountain passes in Colorado on a big heavy bike like this, and the road suddenly turns into this, find out what happens. When I left camp that morning, I wasn't really sure where I was going, but I quickly realized that I wanted to make this pass, if I could, on my big bike. All right, today, last week in Colorado apparently, uh, today I'm going to go explore some canyons down this way, uh, west, I believe that's west, oh, wait a minute, no that's south, <laughs> yeah, going south, so Gunnison is behind me, Salida is in front of me, uh, Buena Vista is to the left, which is north, so I'm going south, I'm going down this canyon. I've been down this canyon before, but usually I'm busting ass to get from one place to the other. So I'm not really slowing down enough to smell the coffee. But today, I'm gonna go explore a canyon. The canyon in between. So you can't go, if you keep going south, it'll take you to Pagosa Springs. I don't think I'm doing that, going that far. But who knows? I got a quarter tank of gas, half a tank of gas. Uh, that probably won't get me to Pagosa Springs, but it'll get me through this canyon. It just depends on uh, what kind of mood strikes me. If I want to do a big giant loop, I'll go to Lake City, Pagosa Springs, turn around, come back through Lake City. Just looking at the map, and it kind of looks interesting. So. And it's uh, geez, this thing is so dug out, washed out. Anyway, that's what I'm doing today. I've, I've been sitting around camp, just kind of, you know, living, loving the outdoors, but not really doing anything. And just decided that I need to actually do something because I'm gonna be really pissed in about four weeks when I'm jonesing for the west. And I'm sitting in uh, wet and cold Alabama. My original intention when I left camp was just to do some exploring. Uh, I have a general idea of what's out there and I started heading south over this small pass towards the dunes. But I quickly realized that I was getting bored and I figured I would turn around and go back and check out that mountain pass that I really had no idea what was up there. And as I turned off the highway, it was a short patch of pavement before I hit the dirt road and then started climbing up into the mountain and past a small village called Bonanza before I started taking the turn up into the rough stuff and wound up stopping at this old mine site here uh, before it really started getting rugged. And all I had to do is take a peek around the corner to realize I was on the wrong bike and the clouds were coming in and I really wasn't into it. So this, apparently this is the old Hawley mine and the off highway vehicle tour. I think I've reached the maximum level of my uh, comfort with uh, with this rugged road and it starts, looks like it's starting to climb pretty steep up here. Anyway, cool sight. I just heard some uh, massive thunder over here. It's been a while since I've heard thunder and it's sprinkling. So I think I'm gonna gather in the history here. Yeah, let's see, where are we? Raleigh, tramway, man, I'd really like to get up there and see that. Where the hell are we? Well, I mean, it was good. Uh, it was good coming up here. Look at that. Good stuff. You can hear the thunder. Yeah, I think I'm gonna scooch on back down the hill. This last part right here was rugged enough for me, so I'll I'll call this a somewhat success. I was hoping to cross the pass on this, but yeah, I don't want to get broken and freeze to death. Beautiful up here. That is some brutal sound and thunder. I think that's about as close as I want to get to it too. So, so I got to crawl down this next section and then, then I can scoot out. 
That was fun though. I bet it gets much, much worse up above. It looks like the road gets steeper, more like a jeep trail. And this is not too far off a jeep trail, although fast and hard. It's probably getting over most of this. But big, heavy street bikes, you gotta go slow. You don't wanna wind up in the, in the canyon. Yeah, I'm staying clear of the, uh, the edge, too, because all this bouncing doesn't give me a lot of room for correction. Man, these uh, aspens up here are just freaking beautiful though. Bouncy, bounce, bounce, bouncy, bounce. I could do this on the RT, but I had to go so much slower. A couple of switchbacks, and then we're back on the, uh, the spot that, well, you can get your trailer in here. And that's, to me, that's a really good sign that uh, that's why nobody... Nobody's passing this point here because it starts getting rugged. Once I passed those rugged switchbacks just below the mine site, the road started smoothing out. And once I got back down to the small village of Bonanza, uh, the road really turned into something nice. And it was, uh, it was nice to roll down through the aspens that were already changing colors. Too bad I was going to miss all the other passes in Colorado. Uh, and all the brilliant yellow orange colors that eventually turned to a bit of a red before the snows came. There's not a large number of houses up here and the few houses that are up here seem to be mostly occupied and it makes me wonder what these people do. Do they stay up here in the winter? Uh, it's one of those things that really makes you think uh, how do they endure life up here in what probably is feet of snow uh, but I I have heard that this area is uh, less extreme in the winter and they get less snowfall less rainfall uh, but that was not my experience today as the closer I got to the pavement the more I realized that I had made the correct choice by turning around once I was clear of all the houses, I could turn my pace up just a little bit to have a little bit more fun on what is a well taken care of dirt road. But once I got closer to the pavement, I noticed the storms to my left and was really excited to be <laughs> off the mountain at that point. I knew I was going to have to cross over that storm going back to camp but I was just happy not to be stranded on my motorcycle. As I drew closer back to the highway, I started noticing the more ominous clouds that hung over the sky. In between me and camp, it was inevitable that I was going to have to ride through this. I just was not aware of how bad it was gonna get until I got back onto the pavement and started looking north towards Salida that I realized that this was gonna be a long day maybe. Now I have ridden through lots of storms in my life, but everything changes once the weather changes dramatically. Like this was a 60, mid 60s to low 60s day that turned into 
a 40 degree day once the hail and the rain and the sleet started falling it became painful in more ways than one the impact of the cold rain the hail and the sleet changed everything in the dynamic and not just that I still had to climb to a little bit more of an altitude to get over this small pass before getting back to the warmth and dryness of Salida, hopefully. And all these thoughts are rushing through my head, and I haven't even made it back to the highway until now. Now's the time when I start thinking, I've got to go through that. I mean, I really didn't have any alternative other than to just try to wait it out maybe on this side of the mountains. but. The more you think about it, the more you think, let's just get it over with. <laughs> let's let's just go get wet and get pounded by the, the moisture. If you've ridden through the rain before, you know that moisture at speed, even if it's soft rain, uh, really becomes very hard at 60, 70 miles an hour. But that's what I was looking at as I headed back over the pass, back north to Salida, is this big, ominous-looking storm that hung over the mountains like a curtain. Like I mentioned before, rain becomes a different substance at altitude. Uh, once your knees and your fingers are wet, the impact of the rain and the sleet, is it changes. It, it becomes painful. And as you can see, I've got my left hand up, hanging uh, just behind the the windscreen trying to protect it as much as I can and manipulating my my uh, visor up and down so I can see a mixture of being able to see the road and the oncoming traffic and uh, staying as uh, as painless as I can uh, with the incoming pelting of the moisture coming from the sky the cold cold moisture that was pelting the exposed parts of my body yeah, it's just something to think about, and uh, luckily I was almost through most of the moisture here, and the closer I got to the crest of this pass, the more excited I became to be traveling down into the warmer weather and getting back to the safety of my camp. I was very happy that I made the decision that I did, but a little bit disappointed that I wasn't able to get up to see the more beautiful pass that I turned around on, but I think that I made the wise choice. I didn't die of exposure on the mountain. I didn't have to cannibalize any uh, passers-by or steal their vehicles. Carjacking, that was just not a thing today. So once again, I survived, and I'm glad that you came along to share my short little adventure across this little short wet pass with me today. I've got lots more videos coming up, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.